If you've been following along with my banjo build so far, you know the last step is to make, get that in picture, some of these flange nuts. And to do that, it's going to require three ops, two at the lathe and one at the mill. The first one is going to be to take one of these little blanks, I've made a bunch of them already, just bandsaw cut, mount them up, try to get them as square as possible because the order of the operations that I'm going to be doing, it's not overly important. But we're going to face it, drill it, and then tap it M6. Probably going to need to replace this tap after this project. I think it's seen better days. Because no matter what I do, I've done a couple of these already. Backing it off to break the chip, nothing seems to help. I think it's it's just dull at this point. But as long as I'm careful. It should be good enough to get the job done. That's it for this op. I'll finish these off and then I'll bring you guys back when I have the jig set up. I've gone ahead and set up the lathe for the second operation. What I've done so far is mounted a piece of scrap bar stock and then turned it down to three quarters of an inch in diameter. That's so when I'm done here at the lathe, I can part this off and take it over to the mill and then use it in a 5C collet block. And I also went ahead and drilled and tapped it and then threaded it for M6 and then Loctited an M6 bolt in place and locked the head off. So what that lets me do is take this face of the blank that I machined in the previous operation and just thread it on, run it right up against the face of the, the blank here, I should say the blank, run it up against the face of the bar stock here the jig, let's call it a jig. And now I can go ahead and face it to thickness and then do all the turning on it.
That is it for the rough work. All I need to do now is uh, put a chamfer on all the edges and I'll be on to the next part. So I've got everything set up now over here at the mill. I've got the hex 5C collar block with the jig that was over on the lathe and a blank mounted up and it's all um, mounted off the stop here which is basically just one of my magnetic bases that's an old one that's got an end that's turned down. So let me go ahead and get started on this so we can get in the house where it's warm. And that's it for making this part. Let me finish these off and I'll deburr them and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to put them all together. Laid out in front of me here is everything I need to set up the change gears. One of the things I didn't show on camera was the making of this part. This started off as the large pin I used when I machined the tapers on the actual banjos. What I ended up doing was chucking it up in the lathe again, indicating it, um, drilling it, boring it, and reaming it, and then making this pin that's pressed into it. The benefit of this is I can stick it in here. And lock it down. And now it's just like being over at the lathe with the lead screw. So I don't have to have this mounted vertically when I'm working on setting up a gear combination. I can do it flat at a bench where I'm comfortable. I've got everything laid out in front of me. So I can go ahead now and I can mount the studs and slot nuts loosely. I can set up the gear combinations on the bushings. This is just a, a washer for this setup thing to space it off properly. And this is just an extra bushing so that this is properly centered. This is a hundred tooth gear. This is what's normally mounted to the lead screw. Actually, I shouldn't have done that. So the first step here is to get the intermediate gear properly spaced. Now you can do this by eye like I do it, or if you haven't done it as often as I have, because I've had this lathe for 10 years, um, you can use the paper trick where you take a piece of thin paper, usually like um, the old school guys did it with um, cigarette papers when you hand roll them. But what I found that I have used in the past are receipts. They're made from a really thin paper that's usually a thousandth and a half to two thousandths thick. So the, that looks good to me. So I can pop that off momentarily, get that out of the way. That stud's now locked in place. We'll put this back on just to test it. Validate that it didn't move. Looks good. I have to pop it off real quick again. Do the same thing on the top. Put this back on. Slide this over and then line it up. There we 
go, that's good enough. Then lock it down. And then this gear train is ready to be mounted on the lathe. But for demonstration purposes, I'll show you guys how this works. Now these are the two nuts, or two of the nuts I just finished machining. And they just screw down and then lock fast to the shoulder because there's clearance built in. You can just crank them down with a, a wrench. And I'm thinking this might be all I needed, but for right now, I've got some extra six, M6 nuts that I'm going to use as jam nuts till I feel more confident that I don't need them. And that's all there is to it. Now I can't mount it to the lathe like this because I have to take this intermediate gear off so I can get it on to the mounting point and then the, the um, large gear on the bottom mounted onto the lead screw. But this is all there is to it. These leads, these um, studs are now perfectly spaced. So for this one's I'm gonna be using for my feeds. So these studs never have to move. Um, I hope all you guys that have followed along this far enjoyed it. Hope tomorrow I'm probably gonna come out here and bear the cold because it's just at 40 degrees in the shop right now because we're having a cold front move through. I'm gonna clean up the shop because I have some woodworking projects to get done before Christmas gets here.